Good morning. Can I say a very warm welcome to this service. As we begin some housekeeping points, if you'd like to make sure that your microphones are muted, we begin. And for those that are phoning in, also like to know who's actually taking part today as they can't actually see them. So just to let you know that Janet's reading the Old Testament reading. I'll be reading the psalm. Paul is reading the epistle. Margaret is um, leading the homily. And uh, Joe is leading us in our sessions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Warm welcome to celebrate this Holy Eucharist on this, the first Sunday after Trinity, and the first of 21 green Sundays. So it's, uh, it's lovely we're in this time of sort of green pasture as uh, we can enter into this time of worship together. Some words of introduction. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by his Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God, our Redeemer. And I'll lead you in the words of the general confession. Mighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Words of the glory. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. We give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father. Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. May the call it for the first Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. O oh God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you. Grant us the help of your grace that, in keeping your commandments, we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. It's going to read our first reading from the Old Testament. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favour with you, do not pass by your servant. 
Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread, that you may refresh yourself. And after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened to the tent to Sarah, and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd, and took a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant, who hastened to prepare it. Then took curds and milk, and the calf that he had prepared, and set it before them. And he stood them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife will have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh yes, you did laugh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm today, Psalm 116. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. I love the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my supplication. Because he inclined his ear to me on the day I called to him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the benefits he has given to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. O Lord, I am your servant, your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill, fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem. Alleluia. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. It's now going to read our epistle from Romans chapter five. Today's uh, epistle is taken from Paul's letter to Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that sufferings produce endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. But while we are, we are still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that 
while we are still sinners, Christ has died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus. And Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions, go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news, the kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Mark is now going to lead us in our homily today. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> Since lockdown started on March the 23rd, nothing has seemed normal. We now inhabit a world of social distancing and a world bubbling with discontent. There is no meeting friends for a coffee or going out for a meal or for a drink in the pub. We miss seeing our friends in St Mary's and taking part in the services there. The hospitality industry has been hit very hard. This morning's reading from Genesis is sometimes known as the hospitality of Abraham. The Lord appeared to Abraham and Abraham responded with alacrity, offering hospitality and doing all that he could to serve the three visitors. In the gospel reading, it's the other way round. Here we see Jesus doing all that he could to serve the people by meeting their needs. Seeing the distress around him, he is full of compassion and instructs the disciples to help in his work. They are to go and proclaim that the kingdom of heaven has come near and do what he does. One thing is a bit puzzling though. They are not to go to the Gentiles or to the Samaritans. Why is that? There is no one answer to this and you may have your own ideas. My suggestion is prompted by the poem of George Herbert that starts Love Made Me Welcome, in which there are several biblical allusions. 
those with a good knowledge of scripture, in Herbert's case, the King James Bible, would recognize the allusions and appreciate the poem in greater depth. Similarly, Jews well-versed in the Hebrew scriptures would be more likely to recognize in Jesus and the disciples the signs of the kingdom that were promised in their scriptures. And Paul had excellent knowledge of the scriptures and would have had no hesitation in saying that the kingdom of heaven has come near because Jesus has come. Writing to the Romans, he said, through faith in Jesus Christ, we have access to God. He also said, even though we may suffer, we have a hope that will not let us down because God's love has been poured into us by the Holy Spirit. God's love and the things of heaven can only be received. In order to receive, we may, like Abraham's wife Sarah, need to let our assumptions go, allow us to entertain and let something new develop. In the poem which starts Love Bade Me Welcome, George Herbert uses the word love as a synonym for God. In this poem, Jesus is the welcoming host who serves at table. Jesus is our host in the Eucharist. On Thursday, in the church's calendar, it was a day of thanksgiving for the institution of Holy Communion, Corpus Christi, for the gifts of the sacraments of bread and wine that we normally do receive in kind. That calendar also commemorates many people whose faith and discipleship, like those first disciples and St Paul, brought the kingdom of heaven nearer to the people of their day. Tomorrow, the spiritual writer Evelyn Underhill is commemorated. Of love, she wrote, Love is creative. It does not flow along the easy paths spending itself in the attractive. It cuts new channels, goes where it is needed. We need God's love and the world needs God's love. With God's grace, may we in the power of the Holy Spirit be and go where his love is needed. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Joe in a moment is going to lead us in our intercessions, just some words of introduction. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Let us pray. 
Jesus sends his ambassadors out to proclaim God's kingdom and bring hope and peace of mind to the lost and troubled in every age. Let us join in praying together with all God's people to the Lord of the harvest in the knowledge that he will provide for us the way that is best. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, from the conflicting needs and agendas of the world, especially at this time of pandemic, we cry for mercy, for a deeper understanding of one another and a greater desire for cooperation and peace. We pray for sensitivity in handling delicate negotiations and the wisdom that respects and listens. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for the diversity and richness of our world, even in these most troubled of times, for the natural goodness of many and the innocence of the very young. We pray for all victims of our world's mistakes and evils and ask your guidance and courage for our leaders and advisors. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for the joy of our families and friendships that we will and can be reunited once again as lockdown eases. We pray for those we love and worry about and those who love and worry about us, commending all those on our digital prayer cushion to your keeping. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for all medical research, predominantly for a cure for COVID-19, whilst not forgetting other conditions that require a breakthrough in science too. We pray for all those who work in our hospitals, hospices and clinics, and for all patients in their care. We pray for all who are stressed and worried and long for the peace of mind that eludes them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for all who have lived your praise and worked for the coming of your kingdom. Receive into the joy of heaven all who have died in faith due to COVID or other tragic circumstances. All those whose ears mind occurs at this time, and for a while we see no longer. Let our strong hope in the eternal God be fulfilled. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We are asked to pray at this time for the Diocese of Rio and the people of Brazil, including Bishop Eduardo Grillo. The number of COVID-19 fatalities is now second only to the USA in this land. We pray for illumination in the mind of President Bolsonaro, that he will finally come to the aid of his people. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for all who sense your calling, lay and ordained, and respond to it with joy. We pray for Father Andrew, who continues to steady our metaphorical ship. Both ordinance, including Sarah, who will be ordained deacon to serve at St Mary's, as soon as our earthly restrictions are eased regarding church services, we pray for her and we pray for all our congregation and our parish to share the joy of your peace. Merciful Father, 
accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, the point in the service when we share the peace together and again as we've done before just um, just a short time together which will then be broken by the hymn which is a lovely hymn um, who came is from above which is sung by the singers the choir of Rochester Cathedral so some words of introduction to the peace peace to you from God our heavenly father Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our witness. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace of the trying God be always with you. Let's offer one another kind of peace. Peace be with you. 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 Pe